Hello. <laughs> um, recently, I feel like I cut it um, two big karmas in my life. One is that I got discharged from the army and went from being um, receiving orders and being in a really tight schedule and uh, in a violent atmosphere to being completely freedom, free and started traveling. And another one is uh, bad karma that I experienced with men. And after going out from the temple, started dating someone and received from him complete devotion and love. In both of the cases, I got so overwhelmed and uh, scared and uh, it felt like from being at the one end of the stick, I went to the other one. Um, so my question is, how, to, how can I attain balance um, in this, I don't know if you know, related to these specific karmas or in, uh, in a more general way, because it felt like from zero I'm going to 100 and back and forth and it's so sudden. If you focus only on yourself, then you will always go between zero and one. Uh, very radically, and from zero to 100, all in one step. But if you really attain the army, then you know that group karma means how can we help each other? This question. I was also in the army a long time ago. I, I was also bothered by many, many things and many people and many ways of action and speech that were, were present in the army. And after that, 10 years pass and I'm in a monastery. Much tighter schedule. But a whole world of difference in terms of direction, aim, way of speech and action. And uh, I did that willingly for over six years because I kept going back to Korea. So outside the schedule, can be anything, but what does it serve? What kind of purpose? And that's why you came back. This schedule is much tighter than in the army, but much less uh, about anything that the army, you know, stands for. So, in a relationship, if you look back at the former Adi many years ago, who got these bad experiences, if you change your attitude and you say, how can I help this person be a man? Okay, so how can I be helpful in this relationship? How can I incite this kind of the behavior from the other person as well? Uh, these questions are very valid and very selfless in a relationship. So then it's not this filter, okay, I want this from him, but I don't want that from him. Let's be careful because he may act and speak like this, but I want something else from him. And uh, this is really, really different attitude. So if you are ready to help this person be a man in your relationship with him, then that person will really help you be a woman in that relationship. And then this is mutually reverberating, mutually nourishing. So that's a pretty good start. So if you see that the patterns change, don't be afraid. In fact, you should be disappointed if your patterns do not change. When we live our lives and uh, we have our morals of many stories, then we change with the speed how these morals are drawn. So we have some big event that serves a lesson to us. And then we say, okay, I'll not do this and this again. But I'll do that which I haven't done before. So this is the speed of the world. I call it sensory speed because it comes through your senses, goes through your mind, goes with your emotions. So it's the speed of your whole person processing the event or the experience. When you practice, not just Zen, but any good tradition, the speed increases. 
and it becomes what I call mind speed. You have realization practice. In your clear mirror, you see cause and effect much faster than you would in the outside world, which goes at sensory speed. So with practice, you become mature. You become spiritually adult, and if you do it really well, you become enlightened. That's why practice is so important. Because you can exceed this really, really slow and painful learning that you see people at the very end of their lives and they still harbor ill will, they are still angry, they still have this total stubbornness about cause and effect that this is not like this, but they were hammered by the same facts for decades. So if you reverse that and you let your mind become clear, you let your space expand, you let your mirror reflect, then you progress at mind speed, realization speed. So then getting to know yourself and thereby getting to know another person will be much less difficult. And in a relationship, it really helps. It helps everywhere. But if you start to date someone, it's crucial that we see through the veil of our own expectations. We can see through this nice haze of the emotional layer. And we can also see through the brilliance of the intellect, etc., etc. These are part and parcel of any relationship. They are essential with all the pizzas, all the goodies that are there and sometimes can get sour. Because we are humans. But if you don't see through them, if you don't transcend them, if you don't see where they come from and how they operate, you delude yourself and others as well. And then there's no one else to blame but whoever you see in your bathroom mirror every morning. Okay? Yes, yeah, so I just, um, <laughs> I wanted to say another thing. Um, I'm, not, I'm not in this relationship anymore because this speed, this mind speed you're you talked about right now. This is the thing I found very overwhelming for me. These changes that I talked about um, from zero to 100 that happened so suddenly. And uh, I did feel that from being here in the temple, it did accelerate these changes in this, uh, and of course everything um, that related in my life. That's why I said, how can you help this person? How can you help your partner? How can you help your beloved? Sometimes that means you slow down. Go with their speed, not with yours. Because then they can be overwhelmed too. They can be shaken by the experience too. They can see, oh, a little chaotic, a little too fast, a little too radical, a little too brash. Then, yeah. And if they see that, they get a little bit shy or disappointed or just uh, say, okay, Maybe someone else. People are extremely quick to judge. Have you seen that? Now, slow that down. So, if you go step by step, you see how much they can absorb, how much they can take, how much they actually want from you, or want of you, then it's much, much better. If you cannot slow down and you go at your own speed, then only someone very similar can date you. And that becomes boring after a while. I, sorry. <laughs> For me, I feel that it is the opposite. I am the one who I feel that my world is so speeding and I need things to slow down because everything is changing super fast for me. If you don't slow down, no one and nothing will. It's a very common illusion. This world is going on so fast. No, you are fast. Originally, this world is complete stillness. Originally, nothing. No movement, no appearance, no disappearance. You make it. But since you don't see the phase when you make it, everything seems to happen from the outside. Okay? You don't see how you throw the boomerang away. You just see when it comes back to you. See the full circle. See the whole cycle. And then it becomes clear what you're doing. How you act, how you speak, how you feel, how you think. 
all these have some speed, some frequency, some content. That's how the world starts to react to you. In fact, that's how you notice it. Okay? So you are quiet and happy, you have a quiet and happy day. You're fast and dynamic and rushy, you have a fast, dynamic and rushy day. Your choice. But if someone gets close to you and you have some bondage, some intimacy, then it's a cruise ship, you know, with two of you aboard. So uh, then the two of you are bound together and he experiences you and you experience him. So it's not the opposite. It's exactly the same thing. 